Uh, I'm just going to show you now a basic rig that we use wahoo fishing that we've had a lot of success with here over the past few years. A uh, little bit different maybe than some of the more traditional wahoo rigs in that we go a little bit heavier uh, as far as the cable goes and the size of the hooks but again like I said we've had a lot of a lot of success with it the past couple years. We'll start out here first with the, the hook it's a 11-0-77-32 Mustad stainless steel hook. Um, the cable we use is a 49 strand stainless cable, 600 pound cable, with the, the proper crimps to, to go along with that, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, the base lure we like to use are these glass head lures with the mirror reflective inside there and you know your, your color on the skirts is your own personal preference. You know we like the blacks and the oranges and greens just you know dependent upon what you like to fish. And then up inside the lure, we're going to add a little bit more bulk by using a 8 to 12 ounce Japanese feather with an additional uh, 50 skirt over the top of that that's going to ride up inside, as you'll see when we get rigging here in a minute. And in order to put all this stuff together, you're going to need a pair of cable cutters, a pair of mono cutters to trim your skirt down at the end and to cut the tops off of the skirts. And then, of course, you're going to need a heavy duty crimper to go ahead and crimp that heavier cable. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do after we've cut our cable to length, and typically our leaders are around 8 to 10 feet long in length, is we're going to slide a couple of crimps onto the cable. Always double crimp the hook. The, the, the bites tend to be pretty violent and you just want to always have backup to your backup. And You're going to go through the hook through the eye of the hook, in through the first crimp, and you want to leave yourself about four to five inches of doubled up cable because we're going to end up covering all that with heat shrink here in a moment once we get done doing our, our crimping. We're going to push it down as tight as your fingers can get it with the thickness of that cable on the hook. And then you're going to select the proper slot on your crimper and doing as best as you can to keep it centered in the crimper. Go ahead and crimp it down. Making your first one. Then you're going to slide your second crimp that you had on there back down again over that tag end. And just leaving, leaving a double length of cable like that. And you're going to go ahead and take your crimper again. You're going to crimp that one down as well. Don't worry if you leave a little bit of little bit of loop in there. Like I said, that's going to all be covered by heat shrink here in a second. We have two different diameter of heat shrink. We have three eighths inch diameter heat shrink, and then half inch diameter heat shrink. And this comes in various colors: black, red white I think as well or the clear color. Um, we tend to use the black but I've used red as well but what I like to do then is I like to have it come down the shank of the hook just shy of where the the tip of the hook is so maybe about an inch from the top of the hook um, the ring down to about a, an inch down the shaft and then right up to where the last crimp is so you can take your mono cutters and then cut that piece off to length so that it is the length that you want it and then take the same identical length again with the half inch heat shrink because it's just going to overlap one another. And we cut that off. The reason that we do this is number one, it gives the rig some rigidity, makes it stiffer, and at the same time you'll find that when you get bites you can get multiple bites, you know, sometimes five, six, seven, eight, ten fish, and it's not going to destroy the integrity of the hook set and it's nice because you can catch multiple fish and you're not having to constantly change out the different uh, the different hook sets. So let's go ahead and put this in the vise and get the uh, heat gun out and we'll show you how we do this. You don't have to have a vise to do this but it definitely makes it a lot easier a little bit safer to do it. Just take your your vise open up the teeth there and lock your hook into the vise And you're going to take your smaller diameter heat shrink, which was the 3 8 inch heat shrink first. 
and you're going to slide it onto your leader. You're going to slide it down to the eye of the hook and sometimes this takes a little bit of doing, a little bit of saliva can help matters, but you want to hold it and then just work the, hook, the heat shrink down over the eye of the hook and like I said down about an inch onto the shaft and at this end here it comes right to where the end of your of your doubled up cable is. Then you want to take your heat gun, turn it on and while holding the tag end up here and keeping it nice and straight start down at the hook and you want to hold the heat gun about an inch away from the heat shrink and you'll see it as it starts to shrink up there and you just want to move the heat gun slowly down the length of the entire piece of heat shrink on the bottom first you can see it shrinking up there I'm going to come back down and take it from the top side. It's really kind of hard to mess this up, you know, you just got to watch that the, the rig gets a little bit hot, so just be careful handling it there for a couple seconds after you're done, done doing it. Okay, now there's your, there's your first piece, and again, like I said, you want to try and hold the, the rig nice and, nice and straight. Then you can take your second piece of half inch, of the half inch heat shrink, and bring that right down the leader, and it's going to slide right over the top of the initial piece, bring it right down to the end, like so, and it'll stay right in place, and again, while holding the leader nice and taut in your hand. Go ahead and turn your heat gun back on again. And then this one's going to just shrink literally right down on top of the first piece. And again, like I said, it's real important to try to hold this as straight as possible. If you, if you, if you just were to let it hang there, it takes this heat, heat shrink a few minutes to get hard. And if, you, if it gets a little bit of a bend in it, it might cause the, the whole lure to track a little bit funny. Which, in some cases, I think that might not be a bad thing. But we like to try to at least make it straight as possible. There you have it. And you'll notice that the overall length of this, I try to make it, it's probably about five inches long with the heat shrink. You know, depending upon the lure that you're using, um, you can pre-make these to be as long as you want or as short as you want. Um, I like to try to get them as close as I can to where I like my lure to ride outside of the hooks, outside of the skirt. But if you were to make it a little bit too short, you can remedy the problem by putting some beads on as spacers or even possibly some half inch or three quarter ounce uh, lead sinkers will slide down there as well uh, just to give it some extra weight as well. And uh, so we'll let this get hard. Uh, you, could, you could take a little glass of cold water or something like that and dip it in the, in the cold water as well. I like to try to keep them dry until I use them, but that would definitely uh, speed the process up. But you can see it's it's starting to get hard now. It's still hot to the touch, but after usually about a minute or two, it'll set up. And then what you could also do if you didn't want to stand there and hold it, you could just you could take it and you could hang the hook from something to, to, to do it, but just to give you an idea of what the rig looks like. That's where you want to finish. This again is the basic lure that, that I found worked pretty well with the glass head and, and like I said, whatever color skirt you uh, you want to fish on that given day. One of the things that I like to do is add even a little bit of extra weight and a little bit of extra bulk up inside of the of the 
initial lure. So what we do is we take this Japanese feather, and these come in assorted sizes, colors. Um, you know, you'll find black and purple, white and pink, all different colors. Uh, but typically the black and red, black and purple, those are the colors that I like to stick with. And again, you can take this, this skirt, this 50 skirt, and you just need to snip the top of it off just enough to see the top of the, of the Japanese feather. And then we'll take the, the Japanese feather again and we'll insert it right up inside of that skirt. Just push it up in there to where you can see it in the top there. That's all you got to do. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this onto the hook set. And this is going to go on first and then the lure is going to go on on top of that. So we're going to come to the to the bitter end of our of our leader. And again, I said this is 600 pound cable and we typically fish it in an 8 to 10 foot length. And we have to go in through the back side here of the Japanese feather. Find the hole. Get that cable to come through. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Okay. Look at that. Get that on. We'll come back again to the end and we'll open up the bottom of this lure. Ooh, I didn't know that was in there, Bobby. That's what? Take that out of there. And we'll come in through the bottom of the lure. Sometimes the cable will get a little bit frayed on the end and it'll make it a little bit more difficult to slide it through. We're going to work, we're going to open up the skirt again. And then we're going to just slide that Japanese feather combination right up inside the bottom of the lure. And it gives it a little bit more length. Like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here behind. I like the tip of my, the point of my hook to be just beyond the end of the end of the skirt. So in this case, I probably could have made that heat shrink maybe about an inch longer, but it's not a problem. Like I said, at the end, you just trim it up. You can take, take your monocolor, your cutters, and just trim off the ends of that longest, that longest skirt. And the reason for this is that at that speed that we're trolling, I want to make sure that the that the uh, skirt doesn't get caught up in the in the hook set. Oops. There we go. So that's the the basic rig that I typically like to fish. It's a good color to begin with. Anything black. For wahoo fishing is usually a good base color cutter and then to finish off the rig at the top of the cable again with that same crimp that we use down at the hook set just come through with your cable and make a loop like such and pull it down to about three quarters of an inch and go ahead and crimp that with your crimper and that's your basic wahoo lure